And so I thought that was an incredibly powerful way to begin this, this conversation that we've actually been continuing, that this week is, is about digging deep. And this monthly context of going further together. And I really especially want to chose that quote this morning because in the next, starting next week and for, from October 31st to December 21st, uh, we as a community are going to be moving into a time that we are calling Season of Harvest. And this is going to be a very special time that in the past might have been called our pledge drive. Uh, but this year it's going to be really about engaging, enrolling, and investing in this space, in this community, in the work that we're here to do together. And what we're going to start to do is that every week after service and in between during the weeks, there's going to be a whole lot more extra stuff happening for us all to engage in, to plug in. Because like, she's, like Scheherazade said in the quote, it's in the spaces <clears throat> where we're able to cultivate and practice new ways of thinking that we can then bring into discussions, that we can bring into conversations, that we can take into our choices and interactions out into the world. And one of the things that we say in this community is that we are here in service to this vision of a world that works for everyone. Right? And as we move forward in our new story here at Center for Spiritual Living Santa Cruz, the idea that I want to bring forth for us is what does it look like for us as a community of individuals to not, to yes, think globally on this big idea, how do we build a world that works for everyone, but to begin right here. To begin with each one of us. How do each one of us begin to step into interaction with life and with each other and with the world in a way that works? that actually works, that serves us, that serves each other, that serves the emergence of the greatest good for all. And I think we can do that by building a template of possibility on this acre of land and in this building. That what if each one of us became a template of possibility in the world? That as we walk, we are continuously looking for there's new ways of doing and being that are going to allow us to step into new ways of doing and being in the world. And in the next number of weeks, we are going to begin in this community to have a lot more classes and workshops and conversations and concerts and a number of events we're going to sort of use to move into this time of moving towards the darkness, right? We are in mid-fall at the moment. You know, Halloween, Samhain, Dia de los Muertos is next week. Right? And these holidays come together at the high point of fall. Right? The equinox and the solstices are the beginnings of the seasons. But then there's the high point of each season. And next week we're going to do a, a celebration and a ceremony here to, to take it out of the intellectual and move into something experiential. Right? Because it's when we come together in shared spaces that that something deeper can emerge. And I believe that each one of us is here in this space because we are spiritual seekers, that we are seeking something deeper than the day-to-day -day experience of life and of our thinking. Right? You're here because you are seeking something deeper, whatever that thing is. And I spoke last week about this idea that, you know, the news, the media, social media, the world around us continuously, con continuously, continuously keeps coming at us, grabbing us at the lowest common denominator, right? And you see this stoking and this poking and this aggravating of our pain, right? That what the news and what social media does is it looks for the most painful things, the most triggering things, the most irritating things, and it pokes at them in all of us so that we become irritated and outraged and engaged, that we want to keep watching. And last week I spoke to this idea that perhaps the lowest common denominator isn't actually the deepest available space. It's just the lowest common space. Right? And that commonality, I believe, is our pain. I believe that our commonality is in our grief. That when we come together and we begin to share our stories of our humanity, of the experiences that we've had, of the pain that we've suffered, of the expression that we've felt, of the issues we've experienced in life, 
when we come together and we share those things with each other, it awakens our humanity. Right? I remember when I was living in St. George, Utah, I, I knew a lot of people who were Mormon. Imagine that. Uh, and a friend of mine who was there was telling me a story about how their parents, based on what they were seeing in the news, had a very negative view of people who were Islamic, people who were Muslim, and said, oh, those people, based on what they'd seen on the news. And then a family moved into their neighborhood that they got to know, and they were telling their son, gosh, these people are just so wonderful. These neighbors of ours are so friendly. He said, Mom, do you know that they're Muslim? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, and that there was, there, was, there was a connection of humanity, right? That when we see the other not as an other, but when we see the other as, as someone connected to something deeper that we are connected to, something emerges. You know, and teachers like Brene Brown talk a lot about the power of our vulnerability. That when we get into vulnerable, deep, authentic spaces with each other, that something deeply connective emerges. And I know for myself, I have done hundreds of self-help workshops, meditation retreats, you know, and I'm sure many of you have as well, right? And there's something that I want to do in this community next year sometime called StoryBridge that I have done with the Gene Houston community that was created by someone by the name of oh my, uh, Richard Gere, not that one, the other one. And StoryBridge is this process of bringing a group of people together into a space. And we ask a deep question about a pain that you've experienced, about a healing that you've had, about a trauma that's come up. And then we each share those stories in groups. And over the course of a day, we take a room full of stories and weave them into a collective story that we perform as a play at the end of the day. And I will tell you that I've done this process many times with groups of people, and it is the most powerful group ritual I have ever been part of. Because what happens is I share my pain, and you share your pain. And then we start exchanging these stories so that suddenly we realize that there's shared pain between us. That there's something between us that's deeper, that's raw, that's available, that's more than the, the parts of us that we just show each other all the time. And then when my story becomes your story becomes our story, there's a greater something that emerges that holds all of us. And the thing that I know about carrying a burden, whether it's our shame, whether it's our pain, whether it's our grief, is that it's really difficult to carry something heavy by yourself. But when you share in the experience with someone else, we start to carry the load for each other. And one of the things in the story bridge process that I saw was people bringing forth incredibly painful, traumatic stories that they've been carrying by themselves for a very long time and then shared it with a group of four people. Suddenly there were four people holding that story. And then we shared it with a room and suddenly there were 70 people holding that story. By the end of the weekend, the person whose story was revealed was so much lighter. There were many hands make light work, right? And so there's something about coming together around the deeper spaces, right? And so we're, I, I really have this intention that in the next weeks and months and years that we become a community who is about going deeper together. And I don't know if, it, uh, actually, I do know because I'm there. Only a few of you have tuned in to the talk after the talk, either whether it was on Sunday, now it's on Wednesday. But I will tell you that that space has become an incredibly deep container where some moving and powerful conversations have been taking place. I know that there are some reading groups and some discussion groups. I know about Sky's group that meets twice a month. There are spaces in this community that are emerging where depth, where conversation where overlap of consciousness is taking place. And it's in that overlap of consciousness, in that shared space, in discussion, in being authentic and vulnerable, that we awaken that something more 
that we're always talking about. Right? Because, you know, we talk about the power of two or more, the power of collective intention, that whenever a group of people focus on the same thing at the same time, something more becomes available. And yet, we are often out in the world in groups of people who are focusing on the same thing at the same time and not much is happening. <laughs> right? It's about deep collective focus. It's about deep shared spaces. It's about the powerful overlap of our collective consciousness that brings about that healing space that I think is what we are all looking for. Because on some level, every one of us is seeking a healing of some kind. If we weren't, we probably wouldn't show up here on Sunday morning. Right? We come here to be inspired, to be lifted up, but also because... We're living in a world that constantly wants to pull our attention to the lowest common spaces. And yet all of us know that there is something powerful and potent and available that is deeper than that. And you feel it when we chant together, when we sit in silence, when we're in meditation, when we're in class or a conversation and someone shares something that sparks an awakening or an aha or fills in the gap for us in our awareness somewhere. And deeper awareness emerges. Because I think much of the issue in the world at large, and I like I spend a lot of time on YouTube just watching the world happen. It's entertaining to say the least. And the thing that I realize is I, I, as I watch what's unfolding in our nation and in our politics and in so many levels of our society, what I think I am an observing am observing is an epidemic of unwillingness to look below the surface that much of the collective attention is right on the surface level of things, right around hearsay, around what they said, around this party or that. There's, there's very little out there calling us deeper. It's calling us from a place of reaction. It's calling us from these surface level ideas that aren't really have much sub substance to them. And I believe that we want to be a people of substance. And I believe that it's our willingness to go deep, to ask the questions, to look below the surface that is actually where we can see the roots of interconnection. Uh, Ron gave me a book last week called Inflamed, which I am speeding my way through at the moment. Thank you very much. Um, and the thing that I love about this book, and you're going to hear more about this in the next weeks and months, is they're talking about the relationship between our health, in inflammation and our health and our bodies, and the inflammation of the environment and society. And it's not a metaphor. They're looking at our bodies, they're looking at the world, they're looking at our society, they're looking at our health, and they're giving all these concrete examples of how quite literally what happens out there is happening in here. And we use this spiritual idea to say that it's all connected, it's all one, that the world inside is the world outside, as above, so below. You know, we say these things, and it sounds like a metaphor. It sounds poetic. It sounds like spiritual concepts. This is just factual reality, that everything is connected, that there is actually no space between me and you that there is only one of us here, that every choice we make, every purchase we make, every vote we make, everything we eat, everything we do is completely interconnected. You know, and if we have missed in the last year and a half that our breath is so connected that someone can cough on the other side of the world and we have to wear a mask over here, that's how interconnected we are. It's not a metaphor. It's literal. What if we understood the oneness that we talk about 
as being that factual? What if we believed in the truths that we speak of and the ideals that we hold as much as we believe in the things that we are afraid of and seeking to avoid? What if? Right? And so the invitation with this idea of digging deeper is for us, each one of us, to recognize that that depth comes from a willingness to be vulnerable. Not only with each other, but also with ourselves. You know, I was watching an interview with Michael Pollan uh, yesterday on his new book, This Is Your Mind on Plants. Check it out. And one of the things he's talking about, uh, he wrote the book How to Change Your Mind as well. Susan Springfield talked about this quite a bit last year, about this thing that's emerging in the world with psychedelic-assisted like, psychotherapy. And it began by using psilocybin, or what some people might used to call magic mushrooms, uh, using psilocybin with uh, cancer patients towards the end of their life to relieve end-of-life anxiety. And more and more and more psychedelics are coming into the field of psychotherapy. And Michael Pollan is talking about his experiences he's had on some of these substances. And one of the things he says is how incredibly terrifying it is because they cause you to look inside of yourself. And that was really fascinating to me. Because it turns out that one of the scariest and most vulnerable places for many of us to look is inside, is in the mirror, is at ourselves deeply. And I was contemplating these words this morning from Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth who told us to love your neighbor as yourself. And I look out at the world right now, and I had this aha this morning that I think most people are doing that. And that's really sad. That most people are loving each other as they love themselves. That most people don't love themselves. And so we see the stoking of hatred and of pain and of division and of separation in the world because people are treating each other as they love themselves. And so what if we begin to be a people who individually and collectively as a community are not only willing to look at ourselves, but are willing to begin to truly love ourselves and then look for the self in the other and participate in the deep and vulnerable spaces that we are creating here and offering here so that we as a community can dig deep and go so much further together than we ever dreamed that we could. And so if you will, take a deep breath in and let go. I will invite any of the practitioners or ministers in the room to stand and hold this space with me. And I invite the rest of us to just take another deep breath in and let go. Take another deep breath and let go. One more full deep breath in and let go. And as we breathe together, Let us breathe into the awareness that each one of us is being breathed by something greater than ourselves. That we are being lived by an infinite life. That we are indeed, each one of us, the life of the divine. Each one of us, the life of the universe. Each one of us is evolution happening right here and right now. That each one of us contains worlds within us. And that each one of us is being led in every moment by a presence that goes before us that is calling us, saying, come be me. 
dig a little deeper. Reveal your truth and your authentic self. And so take another deep breath. And as we breathe together, let us just speak into the awareness that we come into this place to be reminded of the truth of who we are. To be in the overlap of our shared consciousness, to be in the power of our collective focus. That we come into this space to be uplifted, to be reminded of our common unity that we are building as community together. And so feel the emerging depth that we are building together. And take another deep breath. And so I just speak a word of gratitude for all that each one of us has. For no matter what we may think, we are indeed each overflowingly blessed. And so for anyone in this community who is suffering in body, I speak a word of healing. For anyone who is experiencing a lack of finances, I speak a word of prosperity. For anyone who is grieving, I remind us that the joy comes from the morning. May we speak a word that may all beings anywhere who are suffering find a sense of peace, find ease, find joy, find love. And so let us be in gratitude for all of this and so much more as we remember together that there is indeed a power for good in this universe that is so much greater than we are, and yet it is who we are. And so let us be in it, of it, as it, on purpose, with purpose, for a purpose, in everything that we do. And so take another deep breath. And so it is.